Okay, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. A very good morning to everyone. Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi semua. Apa khabar? Uh, my name is Aza, Dr. Aza from ADEC and uh, we are in our third session of library webinars uh, following our previous uh, library speakers. With us today, we have Madam Ko Ai Ping, the very friendly and sweet Miss uh, Madam Ko Ai Ping. Hello, Madam Ko. Uh, she, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> she is our Deputy Chief Librarian of the Central Library of University Malaya. So um, we are looking at a very nice, uh, significant topic in our career right now. I'm sharing with all my colleagues of academic academicians of University Malaya, H-Index. We keep hearing the word H-Index, H-Index, and how much it means and um, implications of it. And uh, some of us may not be clear yet fully of what it is, what H index is. Um, I understand that may, um, we, we, we may have to pronounce it as Hirsch index, not H index. So we'll, we'll get to know of, uh, more of that from Madam Ko. And um, we will uh, listen from Madam Ko later of what does it really mean and maybe some hands-on demonstration from Madam Ko. So without further ado, uh, the floor is yours, Madam Ko. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Aza, for your nice introduction. Okay. I'm Ai Ping. Okay. You can call me Ai Ping or call. Okay. Uh, thank you, Edek, for organizing the session today to give the library a chance to share what is such index with you. And, and this is just a sharing session, okay? I'm not the expert in hedge index, okay? <laughs> okay, and a big welcome to all the participants. And at the end of the session, I hope you know hedge index better. And in fact, majority of the participants put this as their main, main uh, uh, driver, why they want to join today's session, okay? So initially, when I accepted this offer, I thought hedge index, how can I talk about H-Index for two hours? Perhaps I can finish it within half an hour. But after further study, I think perhaps two hours might not be enough. Okay, but no worry. I'm going to finish it by 12. Okay, no worry, no worry. Okay, so before I start today's session, I'm delighted to introduce my two colleagues. Puan Zahara, Assistant uh, Chief Librarian, and Puan Adida, the Senior Librarian, who will be assisting me in answering your question in the chat box, okay? Both are very knowledgeable in the field. Please post your inquiry in the chat box when the need arises, okay? So perhaps I can start today's session now by sharing my screen, okay? Okay, everybody see my screen? Yes? yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, without further ado, let's move on to the outline of today's session. So, we are going to talk about how to measure the impact of an individual scientist, what is an H-index, how to use H-index, how to calculate H-index, how to calculate your H-index. Perhaps this is the main purpose why you join today's session and how to increase your H-index if there is a way. Okay, and last but not least, perhaps we, if we have time, we are going to open for Q&A. Okay, and in, be, in between slides, in fact, I'm going to have a, some quick short quiz, some slideshow, video, and also an exercise. Okay, so please be prepared. Gear one, go. Okay, let's go. So how to measure the impact of an individual scientist? Do we measure the impact on the society, impact on the world, or how do we measure it? But in today's session, we put it in context, we are only going to measure the uh, impact of an individual scientist based on their publication. Okay, when we talk about H-index, we relate H-index to publication. Okay, so how to measure the impact of an individual scientist based on H-index, okay, based on their publication. Okay. The impact of individual scientists is commonly quantified using citation-based measures. Okay. 
this is what happened. So we normally say, what is the total citation that you receive? Time cited. You publish so many papers. So is your paper cited by others? So citations means a lot. Citations for a paper is like, uh, how should I put it? Let's say, if you publish a paper, the paper reach out to your readers. The readers read your paper. If they buy in on your ideas, most probably they will cite your paper. That's why citation carry weight because they buy in your idea. They read your papers and they buy in your idea. So one citation count means your idea, you manage to sell your ideas to one reader. Okay, so that is the rationale behind why citation bring about when we talk about the quality of a paper. So total citations means a lot. So what else? Citation per paper. You have 100 papers. So what is the average citation that you receive per paper? Okay, impact factor. Impact factor refer to journal. But the journal, how do they calculate the impact factor of the journal? Again, it relates to citations. Okay. Eh? Why is go back? <laughs> What's wrong? Okay. And H index. Today we are going to talk further about this topic later on. And highly cited papers and hot papers, etc. etc. All these relate to citations. So when we relate to citation, it's just like when you produce a paper, or it's just like a company of a or a factory produce a product. Citation is like they buy your product. Oh no, yes, a citation is like a buy your product. So the sales figure, the sales figure, if the sales is big, it's huge, which means this is a good product. But sometimes this is not necessarily correct, okay? We have to put in context, they are not always right, okay? So the H index has become the leading measure for quantifying the impact of a scientist's published work. The H-index is prominently featured in the citation database, such as Google Scholar, Scopus, and Web of Science. It forms hiring, promotion, and funding decision. Okay, so H-index is very important if you are academics, okay? Not us, not librarian, okay? Not an ordinary person. What is H-index? It's not important at all for them, okay? So the H-index is widely used is a widely used citation statistic that arguably accurately reflects the impact of a scientist. It takes into account the number of publications as well as how often those papers are cited. Okay, so let's move on. Everybody have to bear in mind H-index. Is H-index a good indicator? Yes, perhaps, yes, but no single parameter or measure can provide an accurate representation of the entire spectrum. When we talk about excellence, we talk about a, a quality, quality researcher, please always bear in mind, scientific excellence of an individual cannot be described by a single parameter. So H-index, Perhaps it's one of the indicators, one of the parameters, but it's not the only parameter or indicator. Okay, so please bear in mind, now you're going to learn more about H-index. Everybody get ready. We are going to have a fun quiz. Please, I'm going to give you the link now. One minute. Can you see my screen actually? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the word fun quiz. Fun quiz. Okay. And, a, and a question mark. Okay. <clears throat> but we I'm going to put the link in the chat box. Yes, please. Please click on the chat box. Uh, Madam Ko. Yes. Are you supposed to show the link on your screen? Yes. How? Uh, can you uh, can you um, unshare and share your screen instead of the? Okay, one minute. So what am I supposed to do? I have to go back. One minute. Eh? How to get back? How to get back? 
The link is in the chat, Umu. I think. Uh, no, no. I mean, uh, originally, Madam Ko wanted to show it on screen. But yeah, she can't right now. Okay. I can't because I can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you? What am I supposed to do? Oh, stop share. Stop share. Uh, stop, okay, share. I stop share. Then. Uh, can you see uh, when you click share screen? Uh, click the screen. The click first the one on the top okay. left. Yep. Oh. You can um, share the. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So now 21 participants have already logged in. 22. We still have to wait for Leon. Okay. This is a pretest, okay? 27 participants now, 28, 29, 30. There are only four questions, okay? And every question, I will give you 20 seconds to answer. Okay, let's start now. The body make it a bit Time's up. Okay, so we move on. Only five participants got it right. Okay, so we move on to second question. <laughs> Look at the board again. How many got it right? Six. Num I think question number three seems to be easier. At least 13 participants got it right. Okay, let's move on to the last questions. An Peng Tiong is the winner of today's session. Okay, 11 participants got it right. So now we go for the view. Okay, so look at the chat box. Okay, rank number one, Tan Peng Tiong. You're eligible to get a small token from the from the library, okay? Followed by Farid and Azar. Yay! Yes! Oh, Dr. Azar, actually. 
okay. You got it right. You got all right. Doctor uh, Tan, Dr. Tan tu? You can chair the next webinar of H Index. Yes, good. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor Tan. Okay, and all the participants. Okay, we'll take part in the session just now. Do you find it fun? You learn something? Okay, this is yeah. a free test. Okay, if you got it right, all the four questions. If you got it right, actually. You may leave the session now, okay? No, I'm just joking, okay? So now perhaps we can stop. Uh, Umu, should I stop sharing now? How should, how should I get back? Stop sharing and share again. Am I right? Oh, Mr. Tan, okay? Your master students, coming soon, coming soon, okay? <laughs> so now we move back. So this is a just a fun quiz. The top three winners, you will receive a small token from the library. We have a table calendar, notebook, notepad. You can choose one of these from the library. Okay, later on, we'll get to you. So Dr. Tan, Farid, and Dr. Aza. Eh, not Dr. Tan, Mr. Tan. Okay, now we move on to what is H-Index? The Hedge Index was developed in 2005 by Professor George Hedge in University of California, which means Hedge Index now is 16 years old since it's first introduced by Professor Hedge. Okay, so the Hedge Index measure the impact of a particular scientist rather than a journal. Initially, okay, it is defined as the highest number of publications of a scientist that received Hedge or more citation each while the other publication have more, have not more than H citation each. The H index is a measure of the number of publication published. We talk about productivity. So you publish a lot of paper, but nobody seems to cite your paper. So is it good? When I ask you uh, how, how uh, I ask you about your publication, you say I publish 100 papers. So they're going to ask you, so what, how many citations did you receive? You say thousands? So thousand, is thousand good or not? A H index give you a number, an indication that the number of publication with a citation number greater than or equal to H. What does it mean? It means when I ask you, what is your H index? If you say my H index is 10, you have 10 papers at least receive 10 citations, even though you have, you, Receive the total citation that you receive is 1000. Okay, that gives you a snapshot of the individual research performance. Focus snapshot. So, if I ask Dr. Aza, what is your H index? Dr. Aza? I don't know, Madam Go, maybe. Maybe it's over. Nanti you boleh cari. Okay, if you find it out later. Okay. 9 ke 10, I tak ingat dah. Okay. <laughs> Or less? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. We will find out later. So, initially, H-Index introduced is for a journal. Uh, it's not for a journal. It's a particularly for scientists. But later on, it's been extended to research group, institution, scientific journals, and countries. In fact, everything. If you have a group of citations, a group of papers, you can always calculate the H-Index of this group of papers, okay? So what is H index? So do you have some brief idea what is H index now? I hope not, okay? Because we are going to, we have more slides to talk about H index. Okay, now, what does H index tell you? The H index is a metric for evaluating the cumulative impact of an author's scholarly output and performance, which means it's measured the quantity and the quality. If you publish a lot, no citation, so what? If you if you produce a lot of products, no sales figure. So is, is it good or not? So we, are, we try to measure the quantity versus quality or the productivity versus quality. So H index corrects for the disproportionate rate of highly cited publication or publication that have not yet been cited. So you can uh, snapshot, the focus snapshot, okay? So H index give you Roughly, how many papers actually are highly cited or uh, have been cited 
for that number of times. Okay, so this is H index. So factors that influencing the H index. There are differences in topical values, different views. Different views will, different views determine the part of the average number of references in the paper. So different views normally have different citation pattern. So if you publish a paper in medical, normally you will receive more citation. But if you publish a paper related to mathematics, cultural, religion, or even library science, okay, the size of the citation will be lower as compared to perhaps medical or energy fields, okay, related to energy, okay. So since values of H index increase over time, it is apparent that a scientist's H index depends on the person's scientific age. And the H index always put newcomers at a dis disadvantage. So because H index increase, because citation increase over time, so your H index also increase over time. So if you are a, a should I say older? No, a senior, senior scientist, you, tends to have a higher H-index, okay? So H-index also does not differentiate citation according to the citing journal and does not take into account the context of the citation. If the citation come from a, a, a journal, a, a meeting abstract or whatever, okay? The context is not taken into account. And review articles tend to receive more citation. This is what we are aware of. And the H-index is strongly affected by the total number of papers which may underestimate scientists with short careers and scientists who have published only a few although significant or groundbreaking and highly cited papers. Let's say a researcher only published 10 papers, but one of the papers received 10,000 citations. The rest, perhaps only 10, five. So what is the, cited, what is the highest hash index this researcher will receive? the highest will be 10 because he only published 10 papers. So, so H index 10 with researcher A, as we compare to another researcher B with also H index of 10, do you think they are equally good? I don't know, okay? I leave it to you. And H index also is insensitive to one or several outstandingly highly cited papers as I explained just now. And self-citation or citation among colleagues, friends, okay? You cite me, I cite you can also skew the H index, okay? So this is the factors is going to, uh, going to influencing the H index. So you know how to influence your H index now, okay? So the H index disregard author ranking and co-author characteristic on publication too. If you are the sole author or it's the co-authorship of 100, 100 authors, yet everybody will receive the same citation and the same H index count for all of you. And that if you're aware of, there are now some papers that publish by, they call it a group authors, and the group authors consists of more than 1,000 authors. We call it mega, mega authorship. Everybody will receive the same citation counts regardless of whether you are the first author or you are only a passenger of the paper, yet the counts will go to you as long as the citation index database index you as one of the authors. This is what happened nowadays, okay? So how to use search index? As you know, what is search index? So how are we going to use H index? It is useful if you are comparing researcher of similar career length, okay? It's also useful if you are comparing researcher in the similar field, subject or department, or who publish in the same journal categories, or you just want obtaining a focus snapshot of researcher's performance. But it is not useful for comparing researcher from different fields, discipline, or subjects, or assessing fields or departments and subjects where research output is typically books, those from the social science discipline, sorry, okay, or conference proceedings, as they are not well represented by databases providing hash indexes, okay? 
So, so how to use search index? I'm not the one who's going to use search index. Perhaps we, we should leave it to the one who's going to decide how to use it. Okay. So what is a good H index? Professor Hirsch, on 16 March, 2021, he said 20 years of, uh, he reckons that after 20 years of research, an H index of 20 is good. 40 is outstanding and 60 is truly exceptional. Of course, this paper only refer to the STEM discipline. It's not referring to social sciences discipline, okay? So how to calculate H index? Now we come to the part calculation. And I'm not going to ask you to calculate your own H index, but at least you have to know the formula. How do we come about to, to get this number, this number, okay? When I ask you, what is your H index? You say 10. So what does it mean? How do we come about to get this figure? So H index will be, is always a positive integer. I don't know, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if let's say I've, I've published a paper, but I have not received any citation. If someone asks you, what is your H index? Do you suppose to say, I don't have a H index? Or I, oh, my H index is zero. I, I'm not sure, okay? So the H index actually is an individual, it's the maximum number of papers of this individual, which have all have at least the same number of citation. Thus, the H index is a positive integer, which means one, two, three, four. It cannot be 1.5. What is your H index? 5.5. Sorry, that is a wrong answer. Always a positive integer. When somebody asks you, 5, 10, 20, okay? That's your H index. Time. With time, the H index keeps its constant value, but time to time, it increases by sudden integer jump. When you receive citation for paper A, paper B, paper C, when it accumulates along the way, it reaches a point, it will increase your citation, increase your H index from two to three, from three to four, okay? That it goes on, okay? And the source of database. As different scientists databases cover, scientific databases cover different parts of the scientific literature. When you publish in Scopus, they index more than 27,000 journals and also book series and conference proceeding. If you publish in Web of Science, the index more around 20,000 journals, which means the coverage itself will make it a different set of citation uh, counts, okay? So the H index is also database dependence. So if you go for Google Scholar, Google Scholar, definitely you will get a higher H index because Google Scholar, the coverage is the larger as compared to Web of Science and Corpus. So the correct expression of the H index is when the individual, the moment in time or date, and the source or database are all specified. So if someone asks you, what is your H index? So how should you answer? Okay, the answer should be, my H index, on 10 December 2021 is 20, according to Scopus. If, you, if someone asks you what is your H index, you say 20. So 20, are you referring to Scopus, Web of Science, or Google Scholar? Or even, if I'm not mistaken, publish or perish, also give you another H index. So you have to quantify, make it in context. You have to tell them the date which means you access on this date as valid, the, the number, the H index is valid as of today's date. And the number is 20 and according to what database? Scopus. So this is how, when somebody asks you, this is the answer that you should give them. Okay, not just give them, what is your H index? So what, okay? So please, Always bear in mind, when somebody asks you, you have to quantify as such or say, now, perhaps I checked a few months ago, my H index is such, 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 according to what? Okay. So now, let's move on. Another exercise. Are you ready to go now? But this is not a interactive session, okay? So no worry. So how to calculate H index? 
how to calculate age index? Any idea? Okay, I give you a context. Context, okay? Calculation of age index, total papers published in Bed of Science, 10, and the total citation received is 100. So, can anyone make a wild guess? What is the citation, possible citation? Uh, what is the possible hash index for researcher A, B, C? What is the possible hash index they will receive for researcher A, B, or, or anybody, anybody with the total papers published in one index in Bed of Science? 10, total citation 100. Just give, just, just make a wild guess. What is the possible hash index for all these researcher, three researcher? Perhaps I start with researcher A. What is the hash index for researcher A? Any guess? Any guess? Nobody want to try? One, 17? Someone give 17? One. One. Who say one? Rudy. Why do you say one? 100 divided by 100. 100 divided by 100. Okay, good. So, researcher A, the hash index, 10, 10, 10, 10. Okay. One low, you know it very well. Okay. It cannot be 10. Okay. You have to know if the total citation is 100. What is the possible? Just now, there's one of the questions that I asked in the fun quiz. Okay. Total citation, total papers, 10. Total citation, 100. What is the possible number? Any number from 1 to 10. Okay. It's the correct answer. But if you look at the... 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 The chart given by me, you won't be 10, okay? 10 is too big, okay? Cannot be 10. Definitely smaller than 10. So what should you do in order to get the H index of researcher A? So the first step, you have to sort the papers according to the citation received. Citation received. Sorted by the citation received. So the highest in a descending order. So the highest will be on the top. So paper number five now become paper number one. 15, 12, 10, 8, 8, 8. Now can you make another guess? What is the H index of researcher A? Seven, eight, four. Why no no Saada say is four? Okay, the correct answer is seven. Just now, do you still remember what I been repeating just now? What does it mean when we talk about H index? Okay, so researcher A. Why I say researcher A? His or her H index is seven because he has seven papers at least or at least receive seven citations. You get what I mean? Okay. So how do we calculate H index? We are comparing the citation received with the number of the uh, sequence of the paper. So when 30 is bigger than one, citation received bigger than the number of the paper, it moved down. So one moved down to 15. Is 15 more than two? Yes. So you move down the line. 12 more than three, correct? Yes. So you move down. 10 more than four? Yes, correct. You move down the line again. The table again. Now eight, is it more than five? Yes, of course. This is just a simple, simple mathematic, okay? Eight more than six, yes, correct. Eight more than seven, yes, correct. Eight more than this seven, seven, is it more than eight? No. So what you have to do? You have to go back, 
to this row and paper number seven is your H index. You get what I mean? So researcher A have a H index of seven on 10 of December, 2021, according to Red of Science. Which means researcher A have seven papers at least receive seven citations. Understand? Is it clear? Clear? No? Yes, so, yes. Perhaps yes. we move on. Move on to researcher B. Researcher B, make another one guess. What is the H index for researcher B? Actually, it's not a wall guess. Now you're supposed to have some idea how to calculate H index. Very good. Everybody got it right? Yeah. H index is one. So I think now everybody is clear on how to do it. So researcher numbers, researcher C, what is the H index of researcher C? Okay, 10 is the answer. Thank you for your participation. Now I think you know, sort of know the pattern and how to calculate the H index. Even though different researcher publish the same number of papers, receive the same number of citations, but the H index might be different. And the difference can be from one to 10. So is researcher C better than researcher B? Is researcher A better than researcher B? I leave it to you, okay. So deviations in the citation distribution of different individuals. Okay, so this is another exercise. So can we move on? So this just now actually we are calculate the hash index. It's a manual calculation, but this in in the normal circumstances you don't have to calculate your own hash index. We always calculate using the databases itself. So, giving Scopus and Man of Science the citation tracking functionality, they can also calculate an individual hash index based on the content in their particular databases. Likewise, Google Scholar and also Man of Science and also Google and, and the publish and perish, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so notes. Okay, please be aware each database may determine a different hash index for the same individual as the content in each database is unique and different. And an individual hash index may be very different in different databases. This is because the databases index different journals and cover different years. If you are a very senior researcher, very senior means how senior? You published before 1990, then perhaps Web of Science will give you a better H index. No. Because, huh? Why? <laughs> because Web of Science, the coverage is back to 1960 something. If you are a senior researcher who started your public, uh, start, start published, before 1990, perhaps Web of Science will give you a better hedge index. If not, normally Scopus will give you a higher hedge index. Okay, so now we move on. How to calculate your hedge index? Your hedge index is based on a list of your publication. Just now I show you, rank in descending order by the time cited count. The value of hash index is equal to the number of papers. The number just now I sorted paper one, paper two, okay, in the list that have N or more citation. So what do you need to do in order to calculate your hash index? First, 
and foremost, the most important thing is compilation of publication. Every researcher, please compile your list of publication. A comprehensive list of publication. You can use bibli bibliographic databases such of such as EndNote, Breath Manager, or Mendeley to do the comp compilation. Please make it a habit. Whenever you publish a paper, put it in some sort of form, compile it. Okay, compilation of publication. Uh, if you don't have a yes, huh? Anybody? Belum lagi, belum masuk lagi. Okay, sorry. So, uh, I join lah, mesti join. Adida? Ya, ada lagi dah. Sorry, sorry, Adida. Okay, so, first one, first thing, okay, compilation or publication. Make sure that you have your publication in hands. I, I'm, at the library, we always have problem. When we ask from our lecturer, can you give us a, a list of your publications so that we can check, perhaps check for your hedge index, check for your total citations. They always ask us to refer to UM experts. But when we refer to UM experts, you know the, the, the screen doesn't seem that friendly. In fact, it's always make us make our work more troublesome when we check UM experts. We always hope that our lecturer can produce a comprehensive publication list and send it to us, it will definitely help us to speed up our job. Okay, so compilation of citations. So after your compilation, you have to find out which publication index in which databases. So is it indexed in Red of Science, Scopus, or Google Scholar? So the citation databases, okay, because this is going to decide what is your H index later? So after compilation and find out where is it indexed in. So the third thing is you have to create or maintain an author profile. So in Red of Science, we refer to researcher ID or publons. In Scopus, please maintain your Scopus author ID. If you're using Google Scholar to track your publication or citation, then please maintain your Google Scholar profile. All these are equally important if you like to track your publication, you like to increase your visibility, if you like to receive more citations, okay? Please create and maintain your own author profile, okay? Library can help, but you have to help library in order to get it done smoothly, okay? So first of all, prepare a list of publication, find out where is it indexed in Better Science, Corpus or Google Scholar, then create the researcher ID, Corpus ID, and Google Scholar profile. Okay, and set an alert after you have created all the IDs, the related IDs. So what is an author or a researcher ID? Yes, is that a question? Oh, am I supposed to answer the question now? Okay. Yes, Prof. Uh, Prof. Abriza asked, is the uh, researcher with a H index of 10 is better than the researcher have an index of five? The answer actually, in, in, the, in my fun quiz, the answer is not yes. The answer is not sure. Prof. Am I answer your questions, Prof? Okay. 
Which database does UM count since there are so many? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, UM counts Scopus and also Web of Science. In fact, I will come to that part later on. Okay. So what is an author or a researcher identifier? In order to enhancing your academic visibility and profile, author or your researcher identifier actually is very important. Besides that, besides your scholarly collaboration networks, such as ResearchGate, Academia EDU, or Mendeley, okay? So this is two components that will enhance your academic visibility and profile. So author or your researcher identifier is one of the component and it's very important. So what is an author identifier? It is a unique symbol for an author that can be used to distinguish that person work from all others, regardless of any similarities of name, institution or discipline. So what is the benefits? It reduces ambiguity of connecting authors to their work, especially where there are common names. I will show you some example later on. Allow researchers to quickly draw together all their papers, report on citation, and measure research impact. So with one click, if you have created your research, researcher identifier or, or author identifier, to maintain it on a timely manner, with one click, you can find out your own performance metrics, okay? And it also provides easily accessible online presence for research output, increasingly visibility and accessibility to author's work. So if, if you put, if you make your publication more visible, more accessible, the chances of received citation will be higher. Okay, this is one way for you to promote your publication. So researcher ID is one of the components that can help you to get more citation. So if you manage to get more citation, it will also help you to increase your hash index. Okay, so what are the common author identifier or profiles that are in the market now okay first one researcher id pablon refer to web of science if you're using scopus it's scopus scopus author id and there's one which is from the non-profit organization is orchid id okay today i'm not going to talk about orchid id but i highly recommend all researcher to register a uh, orchid id why I said so? You have researcher ID, you have Scopus. In fact, UM only look at the, your hash index in Web of Science and Scopus. So why do you need to register an OCAD ID? Because, just simply because researcher ID is an author identifier that recognized by Web of Science and Scopus only recognized by Scopus. Okay. It's a neutral organization. Web of Science and Scopus both recognize OK. And you can always synchronize your publication in Research ID and Scopus ID into OK. And in some university in Australia, in fact, they make it a mandatory, mm, mandatory Every publisher or every, every researcher of their university, when they publish a paper, they have to include their ORCID ID. So this ORCID ID is going to differentiate you and make you a unique identifier to differentiate you from the rest. Okay, so ORCID ID is equally important if it is not more important, okay? And the fourth one is Google Scholar author profile. Today, I'm only going to focus on researcher ID and Scopus ID, okay? If I have time, I will go for live later on, okay? So any questions? Puan Zahara and Puan Adida will help me, okay, to answer some of the questions. Okay, now I give you an example. Why do we need an author identifier, the same name, 
refers to different authors. Okay. First example, Ibrahim S. Ibrahim S. refer to Samia Ibrahim, Prof. Shaliza Ibrahim, Dr. Suryani Ibrahim. When I say refer to these three authors, I'm only, okay, put into context, I'm only refer to University of Malaya. If we put it, if we put Ibrahim S. as so, not restricted to UM, you may have perhaps more than 10 or more than 100. So Ibrahim S can refer to more than perhaps 100 researchers. So that's why you need a author identifier. And there's another, another uh, scenario. Different names refer to the same author. You look at the screen. This is, who else? This is, this is our Dr. Wisi, okay? His name is Muhammad Hamdi Abdul Shukul. You look at the bottom, bottom part of the screen. How many names is being indexed in World of Science when we refer to our Dr. We see? There are 12 different names, but all refer to our Dr. We see. So this is what happened. That's why you need to register a author ID to differentiate yourself, to make yourself a unique author than the rest, from the rest, okay? So this is an example. So what is research ID? I'm going to show you the video for Marrow Science, okay? So when you, when you refer to research ID or PubLons, you are referred to Vet of Science ID, okay? And once you register for a research ID, the same passwords will apply across all the credit rate products. When I refer to credit rate products, I'm referring to Vet of Science itself, Master Journalist, PubLons, if you are using EndNote, the same user and password apply across all the products under Clarivate. Okay, register once and you can use it for all the products under Clarivate. Okay, so if you already have a better science product, just use the same ID and password for your researcher ID. Okay, so first. And when it comes to researcher ID, you have to register. Register is the first step. Later on, you have to maintain. What do you mean by maintain? Perhaps I'm going to show you later on with Dr. Azar account. <laughs> is it okay, Dr. Azar? Yes, Bole. Okay, thank you. Okay, we move on. So how to discover? If you have a researcher ID, in fact, researcher ID in Red of Science is a searchable field. You can use your research ID number or your OCAD number to retrieve all your publication. Okay, therefore, I will advise all of you, if possible, if it's all of you to get a researcher ID and update your researcher ID from time to time so that you can get retrieve all your papers through Web of Science easily. Okay. So this is Publon. How to set up a Publon account? Go to here, click on Publon, register. Okay, I'm going to show you a video for registration, Publon registration. Can you see my screen? No, no, no. One minute, one minute. I have to stop sharing first. Sorry, uh, yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, share the screen like just now. Sorry, sorry. One minute. All right. One minute. Where is the screen? Am I? One minute. Is this the one? All right. We can see the video now. Okay. But there's no sound, is it? Coming, coming. Do you? Dengar, but sayuk-sayuk. 
What do you think? To create a free Publons profile, simply go to publons.com, select create a profile, and register. Can you hear now? Once you've registered, yes. you can land yes. on the profile dashboard, your one stop shop for managing your profile. Get started by adding your publication history from the Publications tab. We make it easy to import your publications directly from the Web of Science. Once you've added your publications, you will retrieve your citation metrics from the Web of Science, the world's most trusted scholarly citation network. You can also import your publications using a range of other options, including from ORCID, DOI or Title Search, or File Upload. Yes, I do. Once all your publications are added, you can easily track your H index, citations over time, and more from your dashboard summary. Publons also lets you effortlessly track your verified peer review and journal editing work thanks to integrations with thousands of the world's academic journals. Be sure to enable the your profile. For any other review records, you can forward the thank you for reviewing emails received from journal editors to reviews at publons.com. We verify the reviews and add them to your profile. Keeping track of all this work in one place makes it easy to demonstrate your impact as an author, journal editor, and peer reviewer in funding and promotion applications with your downloadable record that you can include in your CV. Register for a free Publons profile today and track your work as a published author, journal editor, and, and show your research impact. So this is Publon. In fact, in Publon, other than publication, they also track if you are the if you get involved in the editorial board, you can also put that in. If you are a reviewer of a paper, you can also add that in. Now, Paplon cater for your cater not only for publication alone, they also cater for your editorial works and also your reviewer uh, metrics. Okay. And if I'm wrong, second, okay. Uh, anybody from BSM, if I get it right. UM is going to use researcher ID as one of the means to track your publication. So make sure that you register your researcher ID and update your researcher ID from time to time because UM is going to employ API from Bed of Science and API is the only indicator that we can track your publication is through your researcher ID, the kind of matching, okay? So please, everyone, Get your researcher ID done. If any problem, please refer to the library. Dr. Aiza, actually, I found out you have a researcher ID. No worry, I will get back to you later on. No worries, okay? One minute. So this is, uh, so there's, the, once you have registered your uh, your researcher ID, just Madam now. Ko, sorry. Yes? Are you supposed to share your PowerPoint back? Because I'm going to show another video later on. All right. Okay, sure. Oh, uh, so. It's okay. You can just share if you want. Okay, okay. So, there are two ways to get access to Web of Science. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry. One minute. Perhaps I stop sharing. I get back to the slide. Okay. So, so you're creating a Pablon profile. So, after creating, creating is just a blank, blank sheet of paper. What do you need to do is add publication. You can add your publication just now, the Publon, the video show you how to add your publication in Publon. Okay. There's another way to get your publication added into your researcher ID or your Publon account. Okay. Come to show you. In fact, this is something uh, sort of new in web of science. Okay. And this is similar to the Scopus ID. If, 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 if you are familiar with Scopus ID, this function is more or less like Scopus ID. And this introduced, in fact, if not mistaken, early of the year, it's rather a new product. So besides adding pub publication from Publon accounts or your researcher ID account, you can also add... Oh, sorry, one minute. I didn't share. 
sorry. So, so supposed to be, supposed to be here. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, one minute, one minute. One minute. Okay. So, besides using tablon or research ID to add your paper, you can also, through Web of Science itself, okay, in Web of Science database, using the author record to add paper into your tablon or research ID. So, I'm going to show you this. So, I have to stop sharing first. Am I right? Okay. Then, one minute. Sorry. Open this. Mm, share. Okay. One minute. This is another way to add your publication into your research ID or publon. It's through author record. Searching for papers written by a specific author can be challenging. Authors may have changed their name over time or may have the same name and initials as another researcher. Author name ambiguity makes it difficult to find and assess the work of individuals. The Web of Science uses several tools to solve this problem working in tandem, author records, numerical author identifiers, and author profiles. Let's take a look at each one and how Web of Science helps you take control of your researcher identity. Web of Science uses a combination of artificial intelligence and human curation to disambiguate authors. Our algorithm computes over 250 million authorships from the Web of Science core collection and uses over 40 features to determine the likelihood that two publications belong to the same author, including name matching, affiliation, citation behavior, and co-authorship patterns. This is paired with verified author input from Publons and Orchid, which use numerical identifiers, as well as feedback from the global Web of Science user community, which enables the algorithm to learn and improve author data. The result is clusters of papers called author records. You can find these author records by clicking on an author name or by running an author search. These aren't profiles, but represent a set of likely papers for that person. One person may have more than one author record if they've changed their research focus, changed their name, or collaborated with different groups of authors. Authors then claim their author records in the core collection, confirming which articles are theirs. These claimed author records are stored in a free public researcher profile on Publons and will be tagged with the unique Web of Science Researcher ID number. As they publish more papers, they can continue adding to their profile, which automatically updates their Web of Science author record. But anyone who uses Web of Science, not just authors, can contribute to making Web of Science author records better. Author records have the option to provide feedback through a form that will be verified manually by Web of Science data team members for accuracy, helping to improve author data. Only registered users of Web of Science can submit feedback and must provide contact details, as well as their relationship to the author. See our video on curating author records for more details. Curated and claimed author records mean better author search, discovery, and analytics. We're all trying to get better author data. Let's get there together. Okay, now you have a better idea how to add your publication. It's a challenge to communicate all oh, the ways you influence your sphere of research. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Web of Science provides several tools working in tandem to help you take control save time, and demonstrate your impact. Use Web of Science Core Collections huh? Author Search to gather your articles, get metrics for your publications, claim them as your authored works, and promote them publicly with a Publons profile to show a 360-degree view of your influence.
Sorry, just now there's a technical problem. <laughs> okay, so now you know there are two ways to add application to your researcher ID of Paplon. One, the first way is you log into your researcher ID, you get it done within researcher ID itself, okay, or the Paplon platform. The other way it is you go back to the web of science, you do an author search, you you get all your publication together, then you push it into your researcher ID or your Pablon. So you can add publication from Baron Science to Pablon or add the publication in Pablon or researcher, the researcher ID itself. Uh, Dr. Dr. Azar, just now you mentioned you don't have a researcher ID? Oh, I do, I do. Oh, yes. I do. You do, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So perhaps we, so if I go live, I have to go out again. Perhaps I go back later on. I will finish my slide, then I go to the live demo. Will it be okay? Yes. Other than go in and out from, isn't it? Boleh, boleh. Boleh, yeah? yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Azar. So now, you can also add publication. Just now, there are two ways. One from within, the other one from your science using author search. There's another way actually to add publication by searching for your own publication, then add it into your publons, okay? There are more than two ways to add publication to your researcher ID, okay, from Web of Science. So Web of Science, create, maintain. Am I get it? Clear? You have to create, then you maintain. So what happened to uh, Scopus Author Identifier or Scopus Author ID? What is the difference between these two? Besides, Scopus ID is catered for Scopus Database. So what is the difference between these two is Scopus ID actually is an auto generate identifier. If you are the author, you don't have to do anything. Scopus will auto generate a number for you. Just now you have to generate, you have to create, but Scopus is very smart or sometimes too smart if you generate a number for you. So what is Scopus ID? Scopus ID, connect researcher, same, same, actually, it, it, uh, even though it's different ID, a it, it different set of ID, but it serves the same purpose, okay? So it is generated automatically when the author first publication is indexed by Scopus. If you have a paper indexed in Scopus, the system, no generation require, no registration required, it will generate a ID for you. If the system find out, you are a newcomer to the system, to Scopus. So it will generate a number for you. And it, allow, it allows authors to see a list of their publication and view citation metrics. This is the same like research ID, okay? And also author with multiple Scopus ID can request to have profile merge. In fact, now the same function also uh, available in Web of Science, you can also apply for a profile merge in Web of Science itself, okay? And for more information, always refer to the Scopus itself, okay? So this is Scopus ID. I'm going to show you an example of our one of our TNC of Aziz. This is a Scopus ID that I get the link from his UM expert account. Okay, you must expert account the profile. There's a link to Scopus ID that uh, it is generated on the 12th of November. Metrics overview, please look at the left hand side. 135 documents by author, total citations 6,230. Okay, contributed from 5,417 documents and his edge index is 35. Generated on 12th of November. Okay, so what happened? Then we make a request. So this is on that day. Before and after. 
So we make a request to Scopus to merge all his publication under the same account or same author ID after the request made and reply by the Scopus. Now the latest publication or latest document that index under his name, under Prof Aziz's name is 221. It's increased from 135 to 221. And his H index increased from 35 to 42. So what you have to do is you, you have to check in Scopus to find out whether your, your name been indexed correctly. From time to time, because Scopus is too smart, your papers might index under a different number if they're using their own algorithm and find out, I don't know how it works out. Mistakes did happen and they will re register you as a new author. If there's a new author, they recognize you as a new author, they will generate a new number for you, okay? So this is what happens. So in Red of Science, you have to check whether there's additional new account for you. But in Researcher ID, you are the one who monitor and claim the paper and add it into your own Researcher ID. Okay, so that's the difference between Scopus and Red of Science. Okay, so this is the latest, latest, it's not that latest also because this is generated on the 30th of November, 2021, the latest is 221, citation received 8,899, cited by 700, uh, 7,620 documents, and his search index is 42. And Prof Aziz is one of the highly cited researcher in Malaysia, okay, for, for 2021. Yes, it's just uh, published a few days ago by Wear of Science. Okay, so this is Scopus author ID. Any questions? No? Okay, good. So let proceed. So, how are you going to calculate your H index to meet UM promotion requirements? You learn about H index, how to calculate H index, what is it all about? But how to calculate your H index if you want to apply for a promotion, okay? But this is subject to change. If you want to get the latest information, please refer to our BSM or our HR department, okay? So citation database, only, we only refer to these two. Not Google Scholar, only Web of Science core collection. When we refer to Web of Science core collection, there are only three flagship uh, database that we are referring to. One, the first one, citation index, uh, science citation index expanded, followed by social sciences citation index and arts and humanities citation index. If you are a Web of Science common user, you should know under Web of Science core collection, beside these three, there are book citation citation index, okay? There are also uh, book citation index, conference proceeding citation index, and the latest is emerging science citation index. I call it ESCI, but some call it SKI, okay? So, but for the calculation of an index to meet UM promotion re requirement, we only restricted to these three. Science Citation Index expanded, Social Science and Arts and Humanities, okay? And when we refer to publication, please, when we refer to publications, we only refer to articles and reviews. If you publish uh, editorial materials, a uh, book reviews, a uh, uh, meeting abstract, or a conference proceedings, conference paper, index in Vero Science, it will not consider as publication, so-called, when come to promotion. 
Okay? The same goes to Scopus. When we go, when we refer to Scopus again, the publication we only restricted to articles and reviews, not any papers that index in bed of science or Scopus, but at document type articles and reviews only. Am I good? Myself clear? But if anything, please refer to BSM. Again, I have to emphasize, okay? The criteria is not set or determined by the library. If you're not happy with the criteria, please refer to BSM, not library, okay? The same thing go to your KPI, okay? We follow the instruction given by the authorities, okay? We are not the one, we are not the decision maker. So if you're not happy with whatever criteria set by the top management or whatever, please go to the right authority to voice your unhappiness, okay? Or your complaints, okay? Letter and, and editorial materials are not considered as publication for promotion exercise. Okay? So now, before I go for this exercise, before you apply for a promotion, okay? Basically, this is the information that you have to find out. Okay? You are going to do it. You, you can do the exercise later on. I'm going to do a live demo uh, to perhaps to, to get the feel of how to do it if you're going to do it by yourself later on, okay? So, but before you apply for any promotion exercise, okay, if you would like to apply for a promotion, this is the details that you have to prepare. Total publication, just now, I've already mentioned, when I say publication, refer to articles and reviews only. Put it in the number, in word of size, how many? If you have 100, you put 100. Scopus, 120, put it in. So the, and the quota, I'm referring to, when I say quota, the impact factor, I'm only refer to word of size. I'm not sure whether there's a new indicator later on. So when we refer to quota, we refer to impact factor, and repack factor, then we refer to web of science papers only. Only the papers indexed in web of science will have an impact factor. Okay, am I get it clear? Okay, so you fill in the forms. You fill in how many index in web of science, how many index in scopus. Okay, then you also put in, in fact, I don't need number six. Okay, I just put it in. Okay. Then the total citation that you receive from Web of Science. Let's say you, if you publish 100, how many citations you receive? 1,000, then you put 1,000. If you receive 5,000, you put 5,000. Then the other slot, number three, criteria number three, you also have to put in the citation without self-citations. You receive 5,000, but out of the 5,000, 3,000 are from yourself. So ended up with only have 2,000 citations, that is too much, okay? So please put in that number. In fact, you can get it from Bed of Science and also Scopus itself, okay? You don't have to calculate, okay? The system will generate that figure for you. You just have to fill in, fill in this form for your own good, okay? You don't have to submit this paper, these forms to BSM or to Human Resource. Then you also put in your H index, okay? H index from Web of Science, H index is Scopus. Again, please, we only calculate from the publications, huh? the publication that we regarded as publication. So don't include conference proceedings, conference papers, and also letters. Just now someone asked about letters or editorial materials, okay? Uh, Someone mentioned that criteria number two, number three, and number four 
is only from uh, Puan Zahara. I refer Puan Lista beforehand. According to her, H index from Scopus also take into consideration. I'm not sure. That's why I say, please get back to human resource or our BSM to get details when, when you want to apply for a promotion. Okay, please. And criteria number five, out of the 100 papers, how many you are the first or the corresponding author? Put that number in. And the quartile of the journal, how many in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four? Is it easy? Easy to prepare? Yes. <laughs> okay. So can we go for live demo now? Am I supposed to go to the live demo? Okay. Now let's move on to UM website. The most important website, if not <laughs> one of the important website in UM. Okay. I go to, so I'm now I'm going to go to live demo. Stop sharing. Live demo, one minute. There is a question, uh, there's inquiries. Dr. Farid, Web of Science and Scopus, in, in fact, the system itself will detect, uh, will detect how many self-citation from the same authors, okay? It, the numbers will, you, you can get it straight away from the database itself. I'm going to show you later on. Will it be okay, Dr. Farid? Okay, so now. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Farid. So you log in to UM library. Please, when you are free, visit our library, okay? Visit online. This is our website. We spend more than 8 million a year on subscription. Please access those resources that provided by the library. So once you log into a UM library website, let's say if you want to access to Web of Science, what you need to do is click on a to Z online databases. Click on it. Now we are going to start with Web of Science. So click on Web of Science. So you see Web of Science? You see my screen? Everybody see my screen? Yes? Yes, we can see your screen. Thank you. So I click on Web of Science. So once you click on the database itself, the screen will prompt you to your username. Please, this is a string of number, 10 numbers. Actually, it's only eight numbers. Please memorize the number or save it in your laptop or, or your PC, okay? Then the password is four numbers only. Please memorize that number. It's also very important. Then log in. Once you log in, it will prompt you to Web of Science. Everybody see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Now, what you have to do is, hey, what happened to the, hey. Do you find out today is a new, When I when I captured the screen last week, in fact, it's not. Is it? Last yeah, week? it's new. This is a new new interface. Okay, we used to have this this researcher uh, as uh playing as author here. It start with documents followed by author, then cited references. This is what if you if you uh, can recall just now in the in the video that I show you, it's also part of this. 
uh, it, it is listed here. Now it come out as a different uh, uh, link. Okay, so in order to get to the researcher, just click author search. Researcher actually is author search. You click on researcher. This is something new. In fact, something new for me. I don't know. For all of you, I'm no 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 idea. Okay, so just click on it. Name search. Dr. Aza, can I use your name? Yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> Always start with your last name. Hamzai. Hamzai. And it happened, Dr. Aza actually have a very unique last name. Hamzai. Hamzai. Okay. Followed by N, correct? Okay. Perhaps we just do a search. Okay, Dr. Azar. Yes. Is number three also belongs to you? Yes, number two is not. That's my yeah. sister. Yeah. Oh, that's your sister? Yeah, Hamza Nuhana is my sister in your okay. okay, so if Dr. Azar's name yeah. ended with a icon, a uh, tick in green, which means Dr. Aza have already have a researcher ID and this has been claimed and already added into he, her researcher ID. Okay, so this is an icon here. So what Dr. Aza need to do, that's why I said you have to maintain, you have to update your account from time to time. So what you have to do is click here and here, mm -hmm. then merge records. But I cannot merge the record for you. I, I I don't, oh, yes. Before I go about doing all this, the first thing first, you have to register. If you don't have an account, the system will not allow you to do, uh, to do all this, okay? So sign in with your account. Sign in. Please register account today if you don't have account yet. Okay, so what I need to do is click here. This one also belong to Dr. Azar. Yes. I still cannot match. View as combined record. Okay, you see this? So if you like to know the metrics or the performance of Dr. Azar, you can always read through the whole thing. Okay, it's here. And if you want to see the publication, you can view a set of results. We go back. So now we are here. Just now I mentioned when we, when we refer to publication, we only refer to article and review article. Correct? Then I refine. Then I go to citation reports. It will show me. So Dr. Azar H index as of today, according to Web of Science, is 10. But when I say 10 and according to Web of Science, in this context, I only refer to the criteria that meet UM, UM promotion requirement okay dr aza might have a higher h index and higher citation if i include the conference papers okay am i get it get myself clear yes yes if i include the conference papers you have a higher citation and higher h index okay perhaps perhaps because i didn't click on the uh, conference papers just now so 42 42 publication Citing article 303, Dr. Farid 278 if we counted, uh, is counted as without self-citation, which means there are 26, uh, 26 self-citation. Make it right, you just deduct 200, uh, 278 from 300, 303. So the number is 
25. Correct? 25. So time cited average and hash index is 10. Clear? Yes. Very easy, isn't it? Yes. If you have rated, have already created a, a researcher ID, it's very straightforward. This is what you have to do. You just have to create, update, one click, you get all the information that you need. Of course, when come to the quartile of the journals, you have to refer to journal citation report. Do I have to go to journal citation report to show you? Okay. So what you have to do is, from here, you access journal citation reports. Okay. To find out the impact factor on and the quartile of your journals. Okay, from here, Dr. Azar, can you tell me the journals that you publish in? Um, you can pick from the li oh, okay. Minute, eh? Okay, journals. Just give me some name. Um, clinical biomechanics. Clinical bio mechanics. Okay. Okay. Another one. Um, let me see. Um, I do have a. Sorry, Dr. Azar. Plus one. Plus one. We we'll try plus one. Plus is it plus one? Yep. Plus one. Okay. You can add on and on. Okay. Perhaps I just make it easier. Okay. Perhaps I just add on. What else? This is not, not, not uh, Dr. Azar's journal. I just want to show you how to go about it. Okay. So okay. I give you some example. What else? Malaysian. Journal of. One minute. Journal of Library Information Science. Okay. Go on. Move on. What else? What titles? At um, computers in Biology and Medicine. Computers in Biology and Medicine. Mm -hmm. You can add on and on and on. Okay. What else? One okay, minute. I have a Malaysian journal, Science Malaysiana. Okay, good. Science Malaysiana. Yeah, boy. Um, <laughs> German article that I always submit to and always get accepted there. Biomedicine technique is in German language. Bio? Um, A, B. Am I get it right? The spelling, uh, the spelling is bio, B I O M E D I Z I N I. S C H E. A B O I M. Is this one word? Yes. B Technic T E C H N I K. It's in human language. M E D. Sorry, sorry. M E D followed by Z I. Z I. Uh uh. This one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Any more? Mm, I had I triple E sensors. I triple E sensors. Sensors journal. I triple E sensors journal. Okay. So perhaps it's enough. Okay. Good, uh. <laughs> Good enough. Then we apply. So this is the list. Okay. If you look at the category, mm -hmm. if that journals have multiple, which means the same journals index in more than one category. Mm -hmm. So you it will show you in this discipline is also quota one. In this discipline is also quota one, but the impact factor remain the same. The total citation remain the same because we are referring to the same journal. 
Okay. Computers in biology and medicine. Three subject area in quarter one, the other two in quarter two. But for, for our promotion exercise, we always go for the best quarter, which is quarter one. Okay, so this is how you go about it. If, if you have a, if this account belongs to Dr. Azar, okay, and these titles are belong to her, in fact, when she log out from the account, the filter will still remain there. But if you do a new search, it will change your filter. You get what I mean? So I can also change this. If I change to, if I change the JCR year to 2019 and apply, you have a new set of data based on JCR 2019. The latest JCI year is 2020. And our practice is when you apply for promotion, the JCI uh, year, they're going to use the latest JCI year. So as of now, the latest is 2020. So please refer to JCI to find out the quartile of your journal when you want to apply for publication. It will be good if you provide these to HR so that it's easier for them to check your quota later on. You just attach this as a report for your publication metrics. So, but uh, the, I think the first author and the corresponding author, you can always Check it in your young expert. There is a column for you to indicate whether you are the first author or the corresponding or not, uh, corresponding author or not. If I get it right. Okay, so this is JCR. This is the database or the software that you use to look for impact factor and the quartile of your journal. Any questions so far? Okay, so now perhaps we move on to, so this is Web of Science. You do a search. You can also search by title, okay? Let's say if you search by the title, you search for, okay, Malaysian economics. If this paper belongs to you, what you have to do, you just click, the number, uh, the papers that belong to you, click on export, add to my Papillon profile. So this is another way to add publication to your researcher ID. Just now, first one from the Papillon itself, you add publication from within. Second one, you can add from the author search or just now the researcher search, something new. And you can also add from the title search, you search, you, you, you do a search, you get hold of the publication that belongs to you, check the box beside the paper and add to my Papillon profile. They will ask you, yes, I certify, then you export, okay? That's it, so simple, okay? So this is the way to add publication to your Papillon profile. So now we go to Scopus. Where am I now? I cannot see. Hello. A to Z. I cannot see my A to Z. Can I move? Can I move? Okay. One minute. Just be so now, Okay, sorry. Now we get back to A to Z again. From Battle of Science, now we move to Scopus. Click on S. And click on Scopus. Okay. 
it is loading, okay? So, same thing. We click on authors. We use Dr. Azar again. Then later on, I use one of the NC, okay, as another search. So, Dr. Azar, um, right? Uh, that, uh, there you go. Okay. And search. You can also add affiliation to it. Okay. So, the first one, Dr. Azar. Second one, Dr. Azar's sister. Yes. Third one, also your sister. Okay. Yes. So, later on, she can combine these two, okay? <laughs> so let's say if I'm doing this on behalf of Dr. Azar's sister, okay. what she need to do is click on this, mm. request to merge authors, okay? Then it will prompt you to this screen. Uh, I need to sign in first. Again, you need to sign in in order to request for a profile merge. Okay, so sign in. Zahara. <laughs> Why is Zahara's account pop up? Okay, one minute. Okay, can I can I change this? No, but one minute. I cannot type. Why? Hey, I can sign in with a different account, isn't it? One minute. Okay, one minute. Nampak screen saya ke? Nampak? Okay. Now, we manage to log in to Scopus. So I have to do another auto search. Click on these two, request. Then it will prompt you to this. So I'm not Dr. Azar's sister. <laughs> no. no. Okay. So I'm requesting changes on behalf of someone else. Continue. So, the system will ask you, what is your preferred name? So, mm -hmm. you put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can, okay. Documents, then you check whether all these belong to you. Mm -hmm. If it is not belong to you, remove from merge. Just click on remove from merge from the list. Okay. If there are articles that belong to you, but it's not listed here, what you have to do is search for missing document. So click on it. So search. In fact, the easiest way is to search for the article title. So click on it. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a DOI, you can search on DOI. So you click on the article title. You search for the document. What document? <laughs> okay. This is not a real, real, real searching, okay? Economics, COVID, simply put in something, okay? No result found. Sorry. So, search on article. Any article? Sorry. Eating and nutrition. Challenge. Challenges for oh, children.
Okay? So if this is the article that you are looking for, then add to merge. Actually, this paper already <laughs> appeared in her list. I, seem, I just want to show you an example how to go about it. So if it's not there, just add to merge. This is the way uh, to merge or update your own account in Scopus. Isn't it easier? Easy? Easy, isn't it? So one minute. So now let's get back to the author selection again. I'm going to use one of our TNC. Dr. No Azwan bin Abu Osman, our TNC. Oh, is it? Is he our TNC or our registrar? Registrar. Registrar. Okay, let me use his name as a search string. So, his last name is Osman, followed by N. No Azwan, search. So, first one, refer to Prof Azwan. What about the rest? Oh, too many, too many. 56 is too many. Or perhaps I add affiliation to UM. Okay, so first one, refer to Prof Azwan. Number three, the third one also refer to Prof Azwan. If I get it right, if you want to check whether it did belong to him, you can always click on the document to view the document. Okay, so let's say if we think all this belong to him, so we click and click and click. Okay, so how many? One, two, three, four, five. Actually, all this uh uh uh, all this author ID refer to the same author. Then request to merge. The same screen will pop up. You will check. You just check against the list whether it did belong to you. If it's not, remove. If it's not there, request for a missing to be added to your account. So this is Scopus ID. So perhaps I've really come to the end of today's session. A minute. Let's get back. I didn't share my screen. Okay, share my screen again. Okay. Okay, demo, just now live demo. Now we move on. Once you have your researcher ID and your Scopus ID updated, please put it or insert into your UM expert account. This is the part that you just click on the update researcher ID, put in your researcher ID. The first string is the URL. The second part is the ID itself. The same go to Scopus. Please insert your researcher ID and Scopus ID into your UM expert account. Okay, this is the part that you have to put in your information. Then, how do you increase your hash index? Collaborate with more mature researcher. Researcher has shown that papers with famous first authors get more citation. So please. If you, if it is possible, collaborate with a uh, mature researchers. Okay, choose your journal carefully because if the journal match your audience, the right audience, the possibility of getting citation will be higher. Okay, publish open access again. Increase the visibility of your paper. So publish open access if it's possible. Think about your audience. If you get to the target audience correctly, the chances of getting citation will be higher. And network, network, network. That's the way. If you have a better network, the chances of getting citation will be higher. 
work on your writing, okay? Produce a quality piece of research work, then the chances of getting citation, of course, will be higher. And show up on social media. This is the promotion part. You put it in your research gate, put it in your academia, Mendeley, or whatever research me social media to increase the visibility of your papers. Okay? The visibility, the traceability, and the accessibility, of course, will help you to increase your citation and increase your H index. Okay, Q&A, we still have five minutes. Five minutes for Q&A. <clears throat> Welcome, anybody to ask questions? Most of the participants require the sessions to be recorded. To be to be the recorded version to be available, we will make it available. Um, just look out for our updates on ADAC website. Yeah, you're most welcome. All right. If uh, since we've already also taken questions along the way, Madam Ko, I guess there's no new one. But let me see if I haven't read. Um, I think I think we've all gotten all the questions answered on the chat section along the way, yeah. So um, may I request that we have a photo session while we click on the feedback uh, link on the chat section and um, fill up your feedback and then we have a photo session if you don't mind, everyone. Yeah. It's coming to an end. Um, I know uh, lunch, time, lunch is calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I would like to thank uh, Madam Ko and the team. Uh, Puan Zahra, siapa lagi kat belakang tu? Wadida. Uh, thank you so much for your for your support. And this is the final um, library webinar for this year. It's been really helpful. And uh, I appreciate when Madam Ko put it in the perspective of promotion. It, it, it really... Um, touch our hearts <laughs> when, you, when you mention okay for your promotion for your promotion so very useful thank you very very much um okay uh let me request our organizer to uh take the photo set it on gallery mode if everyone is ready for photo Okay, uh, Umu, boleh queue ke siapa? Uh, Alright, hold on for a while. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else? Lagi tak yang nak ambil gambar? Kita tunggu sikit. Okay, hold on. That's it. Yeah. All right. Um, smile, everyone. One, two, three. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, can we have another round? One, two, three. All right, thank you everyone. Okay, with that, Thank you so much. we formally end the session. Have a good lunch, everybody. Happy Friday and happy weekends. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.